Hi, I'm Sam Crawford, service technician here at Intellimeter Canada, and on behalf of Intellimeter, I'd like to welcome you to our video training series. In this video, we are going to be demonstrating the installation process for the I-45 meter using both loose CTs and CT rails. But before we get started, let's just take a brief moment to go over some of the components that you should have received. So in your package, you should have the I-45 meter itself, depending on what was purchased, possibly an automation module. You should have a set of current transformers, or CTs for short, either in CT rail form or loose CTs. If loose CTs were purchased, you're going to have two sets of interface boxes. One box will contain an A and C board, and the other box will contain the B and D board. You're also going to have a set of ribbon cables, and lastly, uh, the I-45 meter display unit, or MDU for short, depending if one was purchased. You can refer to uh, your packing slip, shop drawings, or other paperwork provided to ensure you have all the parts that you should have received. Now the I-45 is capable of single phase, two phase, and three phase metering, with up to 45 metering points if all single phase, 22 metering points if all two phase, and 15 metering points if all three phase, or anything in between if using a combination of service types. The voltage input is auto ranging and can be used on 120 to 347 volts lined in neutral. Now all of our CTs get tied into ribbon cables, which then tie into four different ports, C, A, D, and B at the top of the meter. And here we also have a set of two pin connectors, which are intended for main meter connections. Here our CTs would tie directly into the two-pin connectors without the use of ribbon cables. Now keep in mind that here we have built a mock-up panel for the sake of this demonstration video. In real life application, you would want to ensure that any electrical equipment or panel is locked off before opening and performing any work. If work must be performed on a live electrical panel or equipment, please ensure that you are wearing the appropriate protective gear, such as an arc flash suit, complete with helmet and gloves. Before we move forward, let's discuss what you should be documenting as you perform the installation. Now keep in mind that this documentation will be needed to program the meter to function correctly using the Intellimeter provided software. So you're going to want to make sure to include all of the following. You're going to want to start with meter numbers. So each breaker is going to have its own meter number. You're then going to want to identify which CTs belong to each meter. So here we have CTs 1 and 2, which would be for meter 1. CTs 3 and 4 would be for meter 2. CTs 5 and 6 would be for meter 3, and so on and so on. You're also going to want to record the phase of each line that we have CTs installed on. So CT1 is on phase A, CT2 is on phase B, CT3 is on phase C, and so on. If you are unsure of the phasing, there is a simple test that you can perform, which we will cover later on in this video. Lastly, you're going to want to record the load ID or circuit ID for each meter. All of these are key points that you must document as you perform the installation. In order to program the iMeter 45 to function correctly, we must first identify the phasing of each line that we have CTs installed on. So to do this test, we are going to have to first energize the panel and temporarily turn all the breakers to their on positions. We are then going to take a multimeter, set it to check for alternating voltage, and we're going to start by placing one of our probes on phase A or line 1 main feed. We're then going to take our other probe and place it on what we believe to be phase A on the breaker. So if we have zero volts difference here, we know that this top pole is phase A. If it was any other phase, we would have a voltage difference, and in a panel like this, it would be roughly 208 volts. So here we have zero volts difference, here we have 208, and here we have 208. Once again, here we have zero, so we know that the top pole here is phase A. Moving on to phase B. Here we have 208 volt difference, here we have 0 volts difference, and here we have 208. So we know that the middle pole here, or the second pole down, is phase B. Moving on to phase C. Here we have 208 volts difference, here we have 208 volts difference, and here we have 0 volts difference. So we know that the third pole down is phase C. We're going to want to repeat this phase test for every line that we have CTs installed on. Once all the phasing is identified, we can go ahead and install our CTs. Now it's time to discuss the installation of the actual loose CTs. 
So if CT rails were purchased, or if you're dealing with CT rails, you can feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter. But if loose CTs were purchased, you're going to have a various amount depending on your metering needs. In this case, we're going to install a CT on every single line inside the breaker panel. We're going to start with CT1. So you're going to want to note the load arrow on the CT label, on all the CT labels. This arrow must point in the same direction as current flow. Because we are installing CTs on breakers, the arrow must be pointing away from the breakers as current flows out from the breaker towards the load. Continue installing the rest of your CTs. You're going to want to install them in sequential order, starting with CT1 on the top left breaker, continuing down the left side, then move to the top right, continuing down the right side. Once all your CTs are in place, it's time to move on to the next step in the installation process. Now, if you haven't already mounted your I-45 meter and your interface boxes, now be the time to do so. Here we've mounted the I-45 on the rack directly under the breakers. We've mounted the A and C box on the left side and our B and D interface box on the right side. Now, because all panels are different, as a contractor, you will have to use your own discretion as to where to install the equipment. Okay, back to terminating the CT leads to the interface boards. We're first going to have to remove the covers off the interface boxes. We're then going to remove the top shields off the interface boards. We're going to remove the four screws off the back plate so that we can pull out the interface boards so we can access the terminal strips. We're going to start with the A board, the bottom board. Now the A board is intended for CTs 1 through 12. We're going to make sure that the white wire is going into the positive terminal and that the black wire is going into the negative terminal. Once the A board is full, we're going to move on to the C board. The C board is intended for CTs 13 through 21, which is three less CTs than the A board, meaning we should have three empty terminal sets on the end of the C board. Once the C board is done, we're going to move on to the B board. Now on to the B board. Now the B board is intended for CTs 22 through 33, and like the A board, it should be completely full. So once the B board is full, we're going to move on to the D board. The D board is intended for CTs 34 through 42. And like the C board, there should be three less CTs than the A and B board, meaning you should have three empty terminal sets on top of the D board. Once the D board is full, this will complete your termination of your CT leads to your interface boards. As you can see, all of our CT leads are now in place. So now it's time to terminate the ribbon cables from the interface boards into the I-45. Now each cable is going to be labeled with which port it belongs to. So we're going to go ahead and remove the cover, loosen off the three screws. We're going to start with the C cable on the far left side and follow with A, D, and B. Now we're going to discuss the installation process for the CT rails. So if you just dealt with loose CTs, you can feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter. So there are different sizes of CT rails that can be used with the I-45. Today we are going to use two 21 CT rails. Now each CT rail is going to have two ribbon cables. The top ribbon cable accounts for the first 12 CTs on the rail, and the bottom ribbon cable accounts for the bottom nine CTs on the rail. The CT rails will be labeled for use on either the left side of the panel or the right side. Now each ribbon cable will also be labeled with which port it belongs to on the I-45, either A, B, C, or D. The left CT rail contains CTs 1 through 21. The right CT rail contains CTs 22 through 42. When mounting, you're going to start with lining up the CT rails with the breakers. You can use the brackets attached to the CT rails to mark where you might need to drill your holes. And once everything is lined up, you can go ahead and mount your CT rails. So we can now go ahead and terminate the ribbon cables into their appropriate slots in the I-45. So we're going to loosen off the three screws here, remove the cover, and we're going to start with our C cable on the far left, and we're going to follow with A, D, and B. If you need to install CTs on the main load that feeds the breaker panel, keep in mind that this time the arrow on the CT table must point in towards the breaker panel as current flows in from the top of the panel down into the breakers. Here we've reserved CTs 43, 44, and 45 for the mains. 43 will be on phase A, 44 will be on phase B, 
and 45 will be on phase C. Once your CTs are in place, we can go ahead and terminate the CT leads into the I-45 meter. Here we fish the CT leads through the back of the breakers down into the I-45. So here we have a set of two pin connectors. These CT inputs are intended for main meter connections. So we got CT43 on line one, CT44 on line two, and CT45 on line three. We've got to make sure we put the white wire into the positive terminal and the black wire into the negative terminal. Now just a little side note, these main CT input ports can also be used for additional customer or tenant metering if needed, but today we're going to use them for the mains. Now it's time to install our reference voltage. Now this is used to both power the meter up as well as provide the meter with reference to the different voltage phases. So to achieve this, we are going to require a separate 15 amp three pole breaker because we are using three phase metering. We already have CTs in place for this breaker. Now we wouldn't normally meter the I-45 power, but in this case, we're going to keep them there, which means that CTs 22, 23, and 24 will become our I-45 power meter. So you can go ahead and terminate one end of the wires into the breaker and neutral block. You can then run those four wires back down the panel to the I-45 and terminate them accordingly into the green terminal strip located on the right side, starting with neutral, line one, line two, then line three. Just to sum up what we've done so far, we've demonstrated the installation process for CTs using both CT rails and loose CTs with the use of interface boards. We've discussed terminating the ribbon cables into the I-45. We've installed our main CTs, run the wires down behind the breakers into the three two-pin connectors. We've installed our reference voltage, and this pretty much finishes the installation process, but we got two more things to point out here, and these are the last two ports on the meter. So this one here is for the meter display unit, or MDU for short. So here you have your MDU. You might not have one, depending on what was purchased. You're going to simply plug the cable from the MDU into the display port width. Now this one here is our programming port. So here we have a serial cable, which will be used to program. Now programming will be covered in a separate video, but we can now power the I-45 up to discuss troubleshooting techniques using the I-45 MDU. So now that our I-45 is powered up, we can view the meter data on the MDU. So we have here our meter numbers, we have our load ID, which we programmed as unit numbers or suite numbers. So we're gonna start with viewing the information for meter one. Here we have our directional arrows. If these arrows are pointing to the right, it means that everything should be working properly. If they are pointing to the left, that means you could have a reverse CT or possibly reverse leads. So we'll get into that in a little bit, but for now we're just going to look at meter one here. So we have here our total kilowatt hours, which you can see incrementing. We have our total kilowatt hours once again, and our total KVAH. Here we have the amps we have across each phase of each CT. So the CT on A phase is currently using 3.2 amps, the CT on B phase is currently using 4.3 amps. We have the watts across each CT on each phase. We have the volt amps across each CT on each phase. And we have other displays that display multiple information at once. So here we have a reverse arrow showing on meter one. This means that there's a problem with one of the CTs on meter one. So we're going to select until we find watts. There we go. So you can see we have negative kilowatts or negative watts across the CT that's on phase A, or the CT that's programmed as phase A. So we're going to want to find the CT for meter one that's on phase A, and check to see that it's not installed in the reverse direction, check to see that it's not installed on the incorrect phase, and lastly, you can check to see that the uh, CT leads are not reversed at the terminals inside the interface boards. These are really all the areas where you may have problems. 
So once you find where the problem is, document your findings and make corrections accordingly. The I-45 should now be fully installed and ready for programming. Now instructions for adding automation as well as programming instructions will be covered in separate videos. But once again, I'm Sam Crawford from Intellimeter. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.